so when I posted these on my social media, um, loads of people said, this surprised me, can you show us how you make them? How do you do it? They look amazing. And it's basically, it's turning sprockets or brake discs into clocks. These are the two that live in my room. We've got one off of Derek, uh, which is UK time, and we've got one off of Betty, which is uh, American time, because then I know what time it is for Jake when I talk to him. And anyway, yeah, people ask me how they're made, and I thought, it's really obvious and simple as they're made. I mean, I, I look at that and I'm just like, yeah, no, I get what you did. But some people don't, so I'm just going to explain how I do it. And there's, there's a couple of interesting bits, maybe, maybe not. It's just a piece of sheet metal cut to fit with the holes drilled in uh, and then a five, six pound clock mechanism off of Amazon on the back. And then you just use the original fixing points to do it. The metal sheet that you want to use is, I think that's probably one or two mil, probably one mil. It's aluminium because it's so easy to work. I mean, literally, you can bend it with your hands. You can actually cut this with kitchen scissors. But when it's all um, bolted in around, it's... Oh, hang on. You can hear. This. This bolted in. That didn't prove a lot. It's very strong and it'll easily hold it. That one was nice and easy. I could actually still drill out those holes to make it fit better. Um, this one was slightly more complicated because of where I had to place things. And if you'll notice, this isn't high quality work. You basically put the, the disc on a piece of paper um, and you can then draw out a template and then put that onto metal. Or you can just put the metal behind it, draw on the metal directly, cut it out with tin snips, you know, file it down, screw the, drill the holes so you get it all in and then just file down everything to make it fit. I mean, it's, as you can see, this side's a bit different to this side and this side, but the front, because I, uh, I also brushed the aluminium, and it's great. I'm doing crap at this. One other thing I forgot to mention, which was the way that I attach this to this is not by using the normal screw that comes, you know, you, you screw on the end and it holds it together. That works in a normal clock. And it would work if you hung the, um, the disc from itself, but because I'm actually using the clock's hanging hook on both of these, I've used industrial strength Velcro, as much of it under there as I can. And that is... It is not coming off. I mean, seriously, that can take a few kilos, so that is never falling off your wall. But if in doubt, use the normal screw that it has and just put a screw through there and hang it on that. But I just like the clean look of it on the wall hovering. Obviously, this works for anything, sprockets or, you know, discs or anything, really. You can, you can even do what some people do is where you make one on a sprocket, then you put the chain around it, and you have a, a, another little clock at the bottom or something different on the... On the um, the front sprocket, so you end up having the front and the rear. I want to do the same thing, I want actually, with what comes off of Derek next, um, or if I can get hold of something, I don't know, I want to basically get like a sprocket and put a clock in that, and then put the, the, the front sprocket, you know, in line, but then weld it so it goes sideways on the wall, like it would be on a bike, not hanging down, because I see so many people doing the hanging down ones, which are kind of cool, but I want to do one that's the same way that it looks on a bike across the wall so you'd have to have a central mounting point balanced you know offset because you've got the chain that much you know what I'm saying but yeah I think they're pretty cool um oh there is one thing which might be useful for something else in the future and that is finding the center point is very easy if you know a little trick so to find the center point you can do the old you know measure from this line and swing it backwards and forwards and find out where it's the furthest away there and then do it that way and then you'll find a cross point and that'll be your center however that can be off by quite a way because your eye and the, the, and the thickness of your line and stuff might throw it off and it might still not be see, perceivable to the human eye that it's off-centred that, that much but the human eye is really good at noticing stuff and if, if it was off-centred for me I would it would make me lose my mind so the easiest way to do it correctly is using cords so what you basically do is draw two lines across your circle um, I don't know if they have to be a set length but I know it works when I do it that way so I make them ten or you know whatever so that gives you that. Then you have to put another line on like that, but it cannot be directly parallel. It has to be at an angle to that one. So I'll do the same thing. Is that still on camera? Yes. And because I know it's 10, I know the center point is five. Should have marked that on that one. Then you need to take a direct 90 degree tangent off of that like so, and you do the exact same thing here, I'm being quick here, I'll be more careful in reality, and the centre point is there. You can put those two things in any place within the circle, 
and as long as they're not directly parallel to each other, where those two lines have an infinite po amount, amount of meeting points that way, the further you get them off, the more accurate it gets. But you know, you find that, that basically. Okay, that's, that's how you find the centre of a circle. Or you use a compass, that's another way, but that maths. I'm not very good at maths, so I'm just good at stuff that you can actually use. In the future, if I get hold of something, I will do a video actually making one. Um, but it was something that was requested so much, I thought I'd just get an answer out there. Also, um, I was supposed to be going out on the bike today, which I was going to make a video, but I actually have to do that tomorrow now. Um, I have no more news on Derek. Literally, as the last video says, we are in the same position. Um, but, and the donations have continued to come in, which um, I, as soon as I know what's going on with Derek, I'm taking that link down. Um, I know there's a few people who said, hey, can you just wait a minute because I want to I help still. So I will give more information on that in the Derek update videos. It's going to kind of end up being a series, I think. Uh, but I'd like to be able to do vlogs or other videos like this or on the bike or, you know, anything completely separate to that and just not talk about the whole Derek stuff because I don't want to make the entire channel's trend be talking about that. Uh, at the moment. I think it would be good to, you know, we, we can still continue making videos. I have bikes, I'm in a lucky position to have a lone bike and, and then we can have two sort of a series running and normal other videos. I'm sure you'll enjoy that. I'll try, I want to get down when the bike's taken apart and try and show you as much of that as I possibly can. But I don't want to talk too much about that in this video. Sorry I didn't make a step-by-step -step video. As I say, I might do that in the future with something else. Um, but I, I don't think it needs explaining much more than that. You, you get it. And I want you to do your own thing. Uh, if you do do something like this, or you've already done it, send me a picture on social media. I'd love to see what people create out of old bike parts. I love motorcycle part upcycling type thing, or, or turning into art. If you like the video, drop a like, and uh, I'll catch up with you in a couple of days once I've been out and we know a few more things. Fingers crossed. Although I do know that the engineers aren't in today, um, so I'm not going to know anything until later on this week, maybe next. It hurts. And it hurts me inside, Mama. I'm a real boy. And I have real feelings. Just been to Hazemere Motorcycles. Hazemere Motorcycles. These people are awesome. They have just donated a £65 bike lock to our raffle for Lumi's, which is in aid of um, the air ambulance. Fantastic of them. Really good. Hazemere Motorcycles, one of the most genuinely nice people that run this.